Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your own jig template and this is basically a way that will allow you to mass produce things or if you want to engrave on the same items in the same position and know it's positioned correctly this will allow that process to be sped up. So what we want to do we start off with our Xtool creative space which is a software we're using because I'm using the Xtool F1 but this does apply to pretty much most laser engravers. So if you haven't got an Xtool F1 you can still follow the same method methodology methodology I've got my words out in the end you can still follow the same process and do the same thing so the first thing we're going to do in this case because they're rectangular business cards I'm just going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to try and put it in the approximate position making sure it's central because the, the whole point of a jig is we're putting things central so you want the box to be central on the actual platform here so we've put an approximate size there that's probably going to be too big, but what we're going to do now is we are going to um, we'll make sure score is selected and by default that normally is because then it will give us an outline of the box. Make sure your power is up to a good amount, in this case 10, so it'll be nice and bright. And then we're going to click the frame in button. And as you'll see on the screen right now, um, we're framing a box and it's too big. It's at the moment obviously too big. We're trying to produce the perimeter of this, this um, business card or the boundary you could call it. I mean, actually, we're not too far off here in terms of the actual height of it. So we're going to move that, that in. Sometimes you'll need to turn the aspect ratio lock off up there. So I'm going to do that. And then what that's going to allow me to do then. And by the way, once you're on the screen and you're framing it like this, you can actually um, move the box with the arrows on the keyboard. So if you want precise movements, just use the arrows. If you want to move it a bit bigger like this, you'll see now it's moving in. Hold shift and do the arrows. That's a good little tip for you there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the bottom right corner. So it lines up on the bottom right of this business card and it's pretty much there. And you'll see I'm not tall enough and I'm slightly too long. So I'm going to drag the height up there and bring that in a little bit. I know from memory these are 85 wide by I think about 52, give or take. So let's do that and see how it looks. So that's pretty good. We're just going to do some some little minute movements now to make sure it's pretty central. I'm going to be quite thorough here and make sure I cover the whole box because the more of it you cover, the more accurate your engravings are going to be ultimately. So there we go. That's good. That is now the boundary of our card. And as you can see, it fills it very nicely. So the next step for us is to actually lock it down. So the first thing actually, the first thing we'll do is put it to a, a separate layer. One, because it stands out more and two, we can easily select it later once it is locked. So I go for a green, because green is a nice contrasting color on the white background, and normally shapes come in black and it contrasts nicely. Once you've done that, we are then going to turn off the engraving, which is that there. That means anything we send through an engrave now will not be engraved. This will not be included on it, which is exactly what we want. Uh, the last thing we'll be doing in a second is locking it, but the first thing we want to do is to copy and paste that, because we've actually got two cards on this jig. So we actually need to do the same now with this upper part to make sure that's correct. So let's stop framing, select the item and then reframe. Ah, actually, because we've copy and pasted, it's turned off. Make sure it's turned on first, that helps. Then we are gonna click the frame button. And as we've just done, and as you're gonna witness right now, we know it's the right size, we just need to get it in the right position. So I'm using the arrows to do little micro movements. And that is now good. We're in a position where we are lined up with both of these jigs or both of these cards. So what we wanna do is you can either do it one at a time. I'm just gonna drag a box around both of them, right click and then group and then lock it. And what locking does is it means you can't accidentally select it and move it around, which is brilliant. That's exactly what we wanna do. So there you go. We've got our boundary perimeter boxes set up. This is our jig template done. Now I'm going to give you an example of actually putting something in there and engraving it. So I've got something. So I've got a file that I, um, I made earlier, so I'm going to put it in, copy and paste. So look, I know now, no matter what I, where I put this within that boundary, it will engrave on the, on the business card. And one caveat I will say, and I, I, and I make sure it's said at the beginning of the video, is that you need to make sure that the laser is focused on the height of the object you're engraving onto so that before you do any of this, because obviously 
if the laser is out of focus and you do this box, then when it actually is focused another time, it won't line up. So here we go. We've got our item. I'm going to put it central and I'm going to copy and paste it. And this is where you'll see the benefit of a template now for a jig because you can easily take any design and just whack it in there. And you know, you can quickly just put a business card in the jig and you're good to go. So let's, um, let's just do an, ex uh, an example here. Look, we're going to frame it. So that's the, that's our bit. And look, as you can see, it's exactly where we want it. So I'm going to fire off this one now and you guys can watch, but actually it would help if I set the material. So I'm just going to very quickly set black business, black metal business card, which they are, and then engrave. And we're going to go infrared reference. And I'm just going to go for a fast, powerful one. Well, that one there's good. Stop the framing and Oh, so look, here's a good actually mistake, a good mistake I've just made there, but it helps you learn a lesson. So I'm going to show you it. It was going to engrave that outline box because I actually forgot to turn it off. And we can tell that from here because these should be under the same window, but it's not. So if I click on that window there, you'll see now that that output is still on. Make sure you tick it off. And now look, they're both in the same area and we can actually select them. So that was very worth that was a worthwhile mistake to make because hopefully you've learned from that. So click start and you're pretty much good to go. I thought we'd end the tutorial just showing you the finished product, you know, proof that it's worked and it really is that simple. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and if you have, please follow my channels. Thanks guys and take it easy.